Okay, so this video is just explaining in simple terms for year nine and for GCSE food preparation and nutrition, gelatinization of starch. Now, we'll talk about gelatinization of starch usually in the context of making sauces. Okay, so one of the dishes that we will make when we have a gelatinized sauce, so that's a sauce thickened with starch, we will make a white or bechamel sauce, and that's the sauce that we use for macaroni cheese, and we also use in lasagna. And we will also um, see gelatinization of starch when we make sweet and sour chicken. So, as we move through this presentation you'll see lots of my hand drawings uh, to represent what things look like so as you can see on the screen here we've got a starch granule now this will be contained in the starch based flour that you are using to thicken your sauce so if you're making sweet and sour chicken that will be corn flour and if you are making a white sauce um, it can be um, just regular wheat flour there's other starches that can be used and there's lots of different recipes with different types of uh, flour to thicken them. But we'll just focus on these two for today. So this is a very close up view. Imagine you're looking through a microscope at a starch granule. What you'll see is a, a granule with lots and lots of molecules all curled up inside. Now those molecules are starch molecules and what they are are very long chain molecules. So that's a polysaccharide molecule. Many, many glucose units all joined together in a big chain. And imagine they're all coiled up like little springs inside a granule. Now as we move through, we've got the source uh, created, the source mixture. So there's liquid in the sauce, usually in the form of milk, water or stocks. They're water based liquids um, alongside some other things. You know, for example, there might be flavorings um, like butter or um, soy sauce, sugar, that kind of thing. But the main thing to remember is we've got starch molecules, which are very big because they've got all these starch uh, molecules coiled up inside and they are suspended within the sauce so the starch granules are so big and heavy that we have to stir the sauce to keep them afloat otherwise they drop to the bottom and they burn so these big starch molecules are being agitated or stirred to keep them afloat in our sauce and there's lots of water molecules surrounding them now, when we're making a sauce, we're doing this on the hob in a saucepan and we can see that we're applying heat. So whether that's an electric or a gas hob, the heat is going to pass through the base of the pan via conduction and then the heat is going to pass onto the sauce. So as the sauce heats up, what will then happen is around 50 to 60 degrees, if we could see inside the sauce with a microscope, what we'd see is the starch granules themselves have started to swell up. And this is because the, uh, the water molecules in the sauce have got much more energy at this temperature and they're smashing into the starch granules much faster and with much more kinetic energy. So they start to break through the outer membrane of the starch granule. The starch granules absorb this water and they start to get bigger and more swollen. Now, as we continue to heat the sauce, the next stage kind of happens around 80 to 85 degrees C. And what actually happens at this stage is the starch granules start to pop. And as you can see, the visual representation that I've drawn, there are no more starch granules. What's happened is they have dissolved and exploded and released all of the starch molecules into the sauce. And they're represented by these orange coils. And what they've done is they've all tangled up because they're very long and they have trapped the water particles in between. And this is when the sauce thickening happens. So we would say at this stage, gelatinization is occurring. Now, when we have a sauce recipe, it usually advises us to keep the sauce at a simmer for a few minutes. 
and when we can see those bubbles in the source we know we're getting near to 100 degrees so what we're doing is we're ensuring that there are no unexploded starch granules that gelatinization has been completely finished so that when we serve the sauce we don't have any floury texture left by those unpopped starch granules okay so moving on we've got a little summary so the first stage of gelatinization is that we have got starch granules suspended in a sauce mixture so like i said in a sweet and sour that's where we're using corn flour in a white or bechamel sauce we will be using wheat flour and those starch granules are suspended that means if we stop stirring they'll drop to the bottom and burn okay so the next stage in sauce making is to keep applying heat to the sauce so we are warming up the sauce now around 50 to 60 degrees these starch granules swell up absorbing the water you'll see the starch granules looking bigger and much plumper at this stage and then at uh, around 80 to 85 degrees this is where gelatinization actually occurs and the starch granules pop or explode those starch molecules are released and they tangle up in the sauce trap the water in between and this creates a thickened sauce now if we were to let that sauce cool once gelatinization has occurred we remove the heat from it what we would see is the gel forming so we would get a starch gel where it's quite a solid mixture okay so i hope that explains gelatinization in a little bit more detail for you and i hope you enjoyed uh, my wonderful hand drawings <laughs> to represent what's going on in your saucepans